It's crazy just how fast a month can go by, but unfortunately our time here on Haida Gwaii has officially come to an end. I'd like to give a great big thank you to everyone that helped make this trip possible, and of course a great big thank you to everyone that has enjoyed the Haida Gwaii content. Now it's time to head back to the ferry and make our way back over to the mainland. But first, let's take a look back at our time on Haida Gwaii. The visitors are happy, they're welcomed, whether it's just here or Masset up in the North Beach. And they learn lots of culture. Now we're preserving that for generations to come. There was 243 communities on Haida Gwaii at the time of uh, intervention, when, they, when uh, Europeans first start showing up here. On top of that too, there's eight different dialects in the Haida language. Smallpox took a lot of our stories and songs and we're really learning because after residential school, we lost a few generations of Haida speaking. We're trying to get that all back now. So my grandchildren and children know their history and heritage and be proud of it. The good part is some of our successful people that left, like uh, kids in their 40s now, you know, my, my, my children's age that moved away from home, got educated, got good jobs, and now they're coming back and they're building homes here, eh? Uh, that's a plus, that's exciting when you see that. Through the years, uh, the logging has really uh, changed the landscape, but at the same time, it was employing our people too, eh? I'm not against logging, but if it's done right, it's good. Same with fishing, if it's not overfished, then it's okay to fish. It all works together. I planted trees was my first job in the logging companies. And I had no idea I was doing it possibly for my great, great, great grandchildren, I hope, <laughs> you know. I dearly love my homeland and um, wherever I travel to, it is always great to come back here. Feels great to be back in Prince Rupert. Spent last night at Taylor Lake. Nice little bit of nostalgia factor from days in the motorhome. It's been a couple years since I've actually taken the boat out of Rupert here and out of the harbor. So we're gonna go out and do a little bit of exploring today. Just gonna get out and see some beautiful places. Really wanna get out and actually pull the boat up and go off on Lucy Island. So we're heading out and doing a little bit of open ocean adventure today. And there's a cruise ship in port, so we gotta go check it out. princess ship but technically carnival corporation owns princess so i'll let it slide going to drop the crab pot welcome to crab town you may have noticed this season has not been the most productive on the foraging front not many crabs zero salmon that all turns around in this episode full limit of everything it's gonna be awesome that's bottom. We're grabbing. So if you go 
this way, that's where all the big ships come in. The cargo ships, ferries, cruise ships, all that. There's a second route going out here, out through Metlakatla. It's a fair bit shallower, but a decent sized ship can still fit through here. You just gotta follow the markers. This little boat, it's no problem. There's a beautiful pass through here though. This is an old shipbuilding yard right here. Funny thing about Prince Rupert, the city itself is actually on an island. It's easy to get to, you just cross a bridge. Well, you can also fly into Prince Rupert, but the airport's on a separate island and you have to take a ferry to get there. <laughs> that's the airport ferry right there. Well, that's the dock for it anyways. Yeah, imagine coming through here on a larger boat. You gotta be so careful. I got 17 feet underneath me right now on a low tide. So this will all be underwater on a high tide. 10 feet. <laughs> this in behind me here is Metlakatla. It's a First Nations village. You can either boat here or take a ferry. I think most of the locals would probably have a boat. I've never actually been here. Boated past it a lot of times. Beautiful area. Look at this water. Just unbelievable. I planned today specifically because we're supposed to have a max of three knot winds, which is kind of a necessity because we have about a 15 kilometer open ocean crossing to get to the island. If it's like this all the way, we're gonna be really lucky. Probably get into a little bit of swell, but nothing major. <laughs> I like that big brass bell. That's pretty cool. Island there's a particular reason that we chose to come out and see this island this lighthouse I've always wanted to come over and take a closer look at this thing oh radical staircase right there <laughs> I think the hard part is gonna find be finding a place to pull the boat up Check it out, Total Beach right here. Beautiful one. <laughs> oh man, this is cool. Pretty crazy how fast things can go sour with just a moment of complacency. Had a close call trying to pull up onto the last beach. Had a bit of a sneaker wave issue. Just about flipped the boat, filled it with water. <laughs> Unfortunately, the leg has sucked up a bunch of sand. I got it blown pulling water again, but I think I'm gonna drop the leg, see if I can get it working properly. I really like it out here. Not enough to wanna to spend the night, but uh, worse places to break something. I do have a spare impeller, but it is of course back in the rig. 
So I just need to get this one working good enough to get back. The impeller actually looks totally fine. Well, I had great plans for today, but given the circumstances, we're gonna have to abort mission. First time of the season. Pretty bummed about it. Sorry, everybody. is I'm gonna back flush this motor but it seems to be pumping water no problem I think we're in the clear but today was a bit of a close call tomorrow's a new adventure super curious what this is here for some type of industry at some point Looks like it hasn't been used in quite some time. I took a look on the satellite, there's nothing in there, but it does have a marking that says National Historic Site. There's no point in pulling the boat up, there'll be some rules around whether or not I can film that. Curious what's in there though, I'll have to ask when I get back to town. I'm gonna see about taking a shortcut here. Looks like an old fish camp or something in there. Been there a long time. Look at the trees growing right off the roof. <laughs> Let's get out of here before the fog rolls in. She's coming in pretty quick. What a beautiful boat that is. Well, since we have a little extra time, let me take you for a tour. There's a spot here in Rupert called Salt Lakes. Some locals have told me it's at the end of this and some locals have said it's at the end of the other one. Either way, <laughs> we're gonna check out this one. I have a feeling that Salt Lakes is at the end of this one because you should only be able to get in there on a high tide. We're one hour off of high slack right now. So tide's still coming in, but not much more. Should be able to just whip right through here. There's an old ship up there. There's a sunken boat over there. Look at this old wooden barge. That's cool. And something sunk over here. Oh, that's a boat. This is the roof right here. Wow. I can't see the rest of it, but that looks like a welded aluminum boat. I can't believe somebody hasn't come and floated that up out of there. Hard to say. That's pretty awesome. What a relic. Another boat over there. Oh, there's another boat there. Wow, this place is kind of a boat dumping ground. It's as far as I can make it in here. Got another hour before high tide, so I'll let the crab pot soak a little bit longer. I'll take you to the other spot that I thought was maybe Salt Lakes. There's another inlet here. Pretty beautiful exploring in there. The first time I ever came in here was with the dumpster dinghy and it was on an outgoing tide and it was just whipping through here. I was wide open with that thing trying to get through. Managed to make her though. I always really enjoyed this spot in here. I think this is why most people don't come in here. 
lot of shallow spots and rocks. No problem for the swell fish. <laughs> well, I'm completely soaked, pretty cold, a little bit miserable, but there's one thing that could make it a lot better. Pot full of dungies. Let's go pull it up, see if we're lucky. I can tell just looking at the buoy, this trap is filled to the brim. There's one and two, holy smokes. I did not think that was gonna be a keeper. Not gonna complain about that. Kinda needed a win today. I've been reading some comments lately, people saying I'm not a very good fisherman. I'll have you know, I am a world class fisherman. Just not a very good catcherman. But I'm not done trying yet. Heading to a place called Polymar. I've always wanted to get there, but I couldn't do it with the motorhome. You can actually drive right out onto the bank of the Skeena River. I called ahead. There's a whole limit of monster cohos just waiting for me. Well, the road down doesn't look ideal, but it also doesn't look too bad. <laughs> Is it ready for a dually? I don't know, we're gonna find out. Dropping in! Piece of cake. A little bit worried about going back up, should be fine. <laughs> as far as fishing, it seems like I'll be the only one actually casting. Everyone's doing the whole stick your rod in the sand and put a bell on it method which i'm not overly interested in but i stopped and talked to a local and it sounds like they're at least catching quite a bit in here so all i need is one <laughs> just gonna be straightforwards with you guys I've actually been purposely not catching fish this year. Didn't want to fill my limit with those tiny little early run salmons. Been holding out for some late run lunkers. My freezer's got a hankering for monsters. Also, I think it's worth noting, it's just beautiful down here. My hands As I drank all its contents, my conscience forgot it was already free. Throw back more, but I need less of something. Shots of you have shot me down, and now I finally see what I thought that I wanted. It's not what I need. I'm
Oh man. Thank you. Good. Oh, appreciate that. Thank you. Nice <laughs> go. I have some tremendously good news. I didn't know if my shoulder was gonna be able to pull it off, but look at this thing. <gasps> can you believe it? Can you freaking believe it? You can see it survived a seal attack. Couldn't survive a Dustin attack. I've heard of a a fish of a thousand casts. I'm gonna be honest with you guys, this was seriously close to a thousand casts. <laughs> Couldn't be happier. This year's salmon took me almost two months to catch, which I think is kind of a hilarious thing that's transpired on this YouTube channel, my inability to catch a salmon. And I have a great fan base here in the Northwest. So there was locals bringing me fishing gear, advice, beer, and when it finally happened, everyone came over for a big congratulations. So it made the experience even that much better for me. So I want to give a big thanks to everyone that got involved in that. And most of all, thanks for watching everybody. As always, take nothing but pictures, leave nothing but footprints, and I'll catch you on the next one.